We're with Tony Hanna, and he is the owner of the bowling alley here in Shelburne, Shelburne Falls Bowling Alley. That's or? just what it's called. That's yes. just what it's called. Okay. Tell me how long you have owned the bowling alley. Mm, yes. My oldest son, Tam, and I bought it uh, April 2nd in 2015. It was sold to us as a turnkey operation. Okay. And the bank where we got the loan is like 500 feet from here. So oh. we signed the paperwork, came in. And turn the key. Turn the key. And look, this hey. is a famous personality here. So what made you decide to buy a bowling alley? Oh, great question. Uh, you know, this, I was, uh, had just retired from a, a job uh, working as a public school counselor, okay. an adjustment counselor. Okay. For 27 years, I had just retired, I was looking for a job. My son, Tim, who you'll meet here in a minute, came here all the time. Oh, here he is now. So yes. This is Tam. Hi. You, you came here all the time before we bought it. It was a place you came regularly. Yes. Yeah, this was our spot um, to hang out uh -huh. as, as, you know, in our early 20s, early and mid 20s. And um, uh, allegedly, I told one of the owners, if you ever want to sell the place, let me know. But you deny that now. I, yep. I you know. <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny. Okay. Uh, um, and uh, so I got a phone call. Uh -huh. Hey, Tam. Just want to talk to you. Give us a call when you can. Um, good friends of ours. You know, we're here every weekend, small town. Yeah. And um, yeah, so they're like, hey, remember if you, you said if you ever wanted to buy the bowling alley? Well, we want to sell it. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, they hadn't didn't go on the market. They didn't tell anybody about it or anything. And wow, yeah, yeah. I, I went and found him. He was cutting wood, just kind of freshly retired. Yeah, Needed said, a project. Hey, hey Dad, want to buy a business? He said. What uh, did you do before that? Uh, so I, oh man, a little bit of everything, really. And was like just kind of looking for something to do nights and weekends. Mm -hmm. Oh, and in the winter, and in the winter too, because uh, it was you know mostly lawn and garden, outdoor painting stuff. Yeah. For these clients. Yeah. And um, here, it, here it was. Right. Nights and weekends. Wow. So, what is it? Tell me about the history, because this bowling alley's been here for a long time, right? Yes, yes, it's been here since 1906 is when it first opened the doors. Wow. Yeah, so the rep, we have a reputation of being the second oldest continuous operation bowling alley in the country. Wow. And it was only uh, two or three lanes? Yes, two lanes. Two lanes down here where we are now and two lanes upstairs in 1906. Upstairs. Okay. In 1906, I bet they weren't automatic, right? <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely. We weren't here, but we've heard stories, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that the, the machines fun. were handset. Uh, by kids, you know, the pin yeah. boy, the classic pin boy. Right. Um, until somewhere around the 60s when the first, you know, they bought the original pin setter machines um, in the 60s and replaced, to replace the pin boys. So, yeah, this is the original pin setter assembly made by Bullmore somewhere in the early 50s. Uh huh. Um, it was made to retrofit. So, if you come around here, it was made to sit where the pin boys would sit. So there was a shelf here that the pin boys would sit on. Okay. And it used the, it integrated the existing infrastructure. When the balls come in, ah. they all sort of end up on the table there. And it sorts them. Get your pins going up there. Balls go up the other side. And then just gravity roll back like they used to. So up top here we get to 10 pins. Okay. And then it pushes them forward. Oh. And then we come around to the other side and we'll see this second step. Yeah, they're up there now. 
And then when you hit the little doorbell out front, when the bowler hits the doorbell, Cool is that? That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. So, and I'm sure that, you know, um, I'm sure the newer models are, are fancy and, you know, look, you know, efficient and all that, but this is yeah. also simple that, like, yeah. a guy like myself can just kind of figure most of it out, you know? Yeah. It's all just very basic. Two position switches. That's awesome. <laughs> was it always candle pin? Always. Always? Yeah. Did candle pins start in the Northeast? Yeah, yeah. I'm originally, I was born in Pennsylvania. So Tam was born here, but I, my wife and I moved here in 1980. And the first time I came in here, I reacted like many people like, what, what is that? What? Yeah, exactly. So you have a lot of leagues that go on here? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are they mostly in the fall and winter? and? We have a league right now, in fact. We have a summer league. Okay. Um, that, that'll go for eight weeks. But yeah, most of the leagues hop in uh, the so week after Labor Day. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, early to mid April, depending on snow cancellations. Oh, yeah. You know, that's You get really some boring. of that up here? <laughs> Just a we little get bit. some of it. <laughs> yeah. So, are you good? That would be awesome. You know, I'm kind of middle of the road. Yeah. That's super good. How about you? Well, we finished our Wednesday league with exactly the same average. Yeah, he and I are both like so was it 80, 80s, yeah, 87. 87, which is kind of you know about in the middle. We have people, you know, the the people at the top have low hundred averages. You know, they'll average 105. Do you have parley, uh, kids parties and things like that as well, or? Oh yeah, and definitely. Retirement kids parties, retirement parties. Um, what's really become a, a kind of a niche. Thing in the last year or two is the uh, re uh, like rehearsal dinner or <laughs> welcome party. Yeah, they call them. Uh, we're calling them welcome parties as a thing now. Apparently, pre-wedding, so the night before the wedding. Oh, really? After yeah. rehearsal, any of like your extended family, out of town guests, um, you know that the, the, the people who are in town. Yeah. You want to see everybody as much as you can, so yeah. they'll you know rent Come out the, rent out the place for a couple hours and get some food and yeah. we've survived t two pandemics, right? Spanish flu, which was 1918. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and, and now this just one. Kind of. Wow. Yeah. Just kind of dawned. Uh -huh. Um. On us, two world wars. Two world yeah, wars. The place keeps kicking, right? It's, it it is keeps rolling. Really been this sort there of unofficial go. cultural hub of town for 117 years now. Yep. Keeps rolling, no pun intended, right? <laughs> no pun intended, uh, Very for sure. funny. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jokes. Rolling along. I think I need to test my skills. Yeah, she's looking to do some bowling. Time. Okay, okay, excellent. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. I'm sure you know this, uh, that there's never been a perfect game, right? Game of like 10 pin, they roll 300s. They get all strikes. There's never yeah. been the world record in Candleton is 245. Really? The house record here is 178. Wow. Yeah. All right, I'll try one more uh, inning. This could be the one. One more box. <laughs> more box. <laughs> That wobble thing, oh man. But at least it's just like dancing there, but it's gonna stay standing up. Of course. Of course it is. But those are gonna knock those over. Oh, not that way though. Hey, I got one. You got one, you clean up that side. Now get that big one land down. That should be easy, right? Oh, no, I twisted again. That was practice. Oh. Oh. Come on, 
you. Come on. All right, it's gotta come down. Uh, I'm hit. I'm too up too far. All right. There we go. How's the one you were waiting for?